Okay, so I've got most of my paint palette ready to go. When working with these, I like to use these ketchup bottles. I find them really easy to fill our palette. We want to make sure we have enough paint, but we don't want to have too much paint to complete our project. Um, and then we're ready to go with our paints. There's several brushes. There are several different brush styles. So we've got round brushes in different lengths and styles. We've got flat brushes in different lengths and thicknesses. And depending on the style of brush you have, you will get different techniques. The smaller and more round the brush, the smaller the details you can create. The larger the brush, the bigger area you're gonna fill, but you're not gonna have as much control as you would with a smaller brush. Okay, so just like with anything, I wanna use black at the very end. So I know this part of my eye is gonna be black. So I'm gonna leave the pupil alone and I'm gonna to start to work with the colored part or the iris of my eye. Um, for this one, I think I want to go with purple for the colored part of my eye. So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to start to fill all of the space around the eye. Notice these brush strokes and the movement they create. And if you look at your eye, you, the color of your eye almost looks as if it's being pulled outwards from the pupil. So I like to have my brush strokes match that. I think it makes it look a little bit more natural. base color in there. I'll probably come back. I'm going to add some more purple on top. I might even add some blue to give some different depth and dimension to the eye. I want the rest of it to be green. I know I want it to be a lighter green. So I'm going to scoop some green into the mixing center. Clean my brush. It's very important that you clean your brush between colors so that you don't contaminate the colors you are using. I'm going to get some white. And while I lighten it, I also want to kind of change the color effect and have it become a little bit of a yellow green. So I'll grab some yellow. And I want to work to really mix these up. I want to stay in this area because I might need to mix other colors. So I don't want to fill this whole mixing area with this green because then I will not have space to mix other colors if I decide later that I need to. Alright, so now I've got my green. And yes, this is normally the white of the eye. But I'm going to do bold colors making it my own. Choosing colors that I like, colors that I think work well together. And I'm going to continue to do this all the way around, putting my base colors down for my eye. Adding white to lighten, I could add black to darken, and I can mix colors together to make new colors. So I've done a base layer and I've got most of my colors in. One thing that I forgot to draw initially was the line here for the bridge of the nose. So zoom in on the face and zoom in on the eye, we're still going to get a portion of the nose. 
So as I painted, I created that line. Now, I do not like all of those brush strokes in there. That's my personal opinion. If you like them, you can stick with them, you can keep them. If you don't like them and you're wanting to get rid of them, then we can add more paint over the top and go in opposite directions. As we add more paint to it, our color is also going to get thicker as we begin layering the paint. Sometimes we overpaint, which means we put too much paint on the paper and we start to ruin our paper. It starts to disintegrate because we just keep painting the same areas. So we want to avoid that. And sometimes we just get so excited about paint that we just start making a mess and dripping and dropping things everywhere. And then we become frustrated because our colors start to mix and we start to get a bit of a muddy mess. Okay, so that's looking a little better. Some of those brush strokes are starting to disappear. I just added a little bit more. And now my paper is still wet. So it's important that we do different blending and things um, depending on the looks that we want, either when it's wet or totally dry. If we want the colors to fade into each other, we want them to be a little bit wet. If we want to put a color on top, so that it stands out, we want them to be dry. And when I blend, sometimes I work with my paints and on the edges, I can kind of blend and streak my colors together like that without adding anything else. And again, it just adds a little bit more interest because it's still wet. Or I can come back in and I really want to add some lighter purple And then I can come in with some darker purple. And I'm just kind of outlining where my pupil's going to be. darker purple and then I can come in with a smaller round brush and I can start to pull this out my edges like so again giving it more movement giving it more interest as I come around the eye Pupil's going to be black, so if I get something in there, it's okay. It's not going to really affect the pupil because the black will cover it. I like that dark being pulled into the light that I did, so I want to do the same thing in this green area. outlining
pull it, strike it, give it a little bit more interest. Same with my glue. Put a little bit on there. If you're working with a dry brush, just a little bit of paint on it, I can also get that same effect. So I'm getting some paint and kind of brushing it off a little bit on the side, and then I can pull the darker glue in from those edges as well. Okay. And I need to work on the nose area. With this picture, I'm working with only cool colors. I could mix, I could do warm colors and cool colors together. Um, I've decided to stick solely with cool colors in this um, because I did kind of the eyelid area with blue I think I'm going to do the nose with blue as well I have done as much as I can because my paper is still wet. My final steps I'm going to work with when it is dry. So this would be a good place for you to stop and put things on your drying rack and then to come back to it next week. And I will see you again to show you how to do the finishing steps. All right, my eye is ready. It's been drying, so now I can start working on some of my finer details, such as outlining. I like to outline the eye, it helps make it stand out. I also like to add um, eyelashes in. So again, I like to work with a smaller round brush. It gives me more control, makes it easier to focus on my details. I'm gonna get the tip ready with black. And I'm gonna come in, and I'm going to to outline. I'm going to run out of paint very quickly with this, but that's okay. I don't want to overload my brush because then my line will be way too thick. I'm going to work slowly, going all the way around the eye to outline it and clean up my edges. Okay, I've done most of the areas that I need with black. The last thing I need are eyelashes. And I like to use a flat brush for this. And I like to really work and make sure that it's flattening out. Kind of get it to spread a little bit. And when this is still wet, I can pull some eyelashes out of this. I can also come in. And again, I don't want a lot of paint, just a little bit. And then can start to pull my eyelashes outward in a curved motion.
I'm working with my brush sideways, like this. Not this way, but this way. So that I can get these thin lines. Another option is you could go through with Sharpie to get much cleaner lines. And as this dries, I want to continue to spread this. I want the pupil to be solid. I don't want to see any brush strokes because I think that would be very distracting with pupil. And come back in when it's dry and add a little bit more black paint over the top. Now, when we first drew, we had an eyebrow up here. And so I'm going to add that eyebrow back in. I could do it with black, make it stand out, or I can work with another color. And I'm gonna make my eyebrow stand out with color because eyebrows are made up of hair. And I think if I had a purple face, my hair, I don't know, maybe it'll be orange today. eyebrow in there and because I put my nose in the wrong place I painted my eyelashes in the wrong direction I'm gonna come in there to do the best I can to hide the nose here eyelashes always move away from the nose that's how I know that I put my eyelashes in the wrong direction dries I would come back probably add more purple paint to it and if that doesn't work and that doesn't hide it then I can come in with blue and white and create these colors all over with this swirling brush stroke and have more interest start to get my purple on there, I can see it starts to hide. So I'm going to stop here, I'm going to call this done, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure I clean up all my materials, um, brushes, we want to always rinse them out in our water bowl so they're easier to clean when we go to the sink. When you're at the sink, remember you're going to run it underwater, you want to pinch at your bristles and wash your bristles in your hand, sometimes I can kind of paint the palm of my hand as it's running under the water make sure they are clean and then you're going to put your brush standing up they call it bristles or hair up so that we don't bend these break them and have them become a mess and if you decide to work with these paints you know what to do